In this video, we're going to reveal exactly how much cash we earned mining Monero on our Raspberry Pi for 24 hours. I'm also going to prove that Monero is 100% traceable. See, just as I said, easily traceable. But really, if you're not interested in crypto mining, I would still urge you to watch this video to the very end, because we're gonna discuss the process of crypto mining. So as this trend continues to grow and gain in popularity, you'll be equipped with an underlying understanding about the technology that might very well power the new economy. Anyways, let's get started. So for this tutorial, we're gonna mine Monero, which is a privacy coin with several interesting properties. The most relevant being that Monero must be mined with a CPU as opposed to a GPU or A6 chip. See, the Raspberry Pi does have a small GPU on board, but it's not accessible for crypto mining. As a result, we're gonna rely on the four quad core CPUs within our Raspberry Pi to do our crypto mining. We all know that there are thousands of meme coins out there, and it can be hard to separate the wheat from the chaff and understand and, you know which projects are valid and which are just fly-by-night operators. In my opinion, Monero is a coin with far-reaching and very practical application. In essence, it's a privacy coin. So in contrast to things like Bitcoin and Ethereum that run a public blockchain ledger, Monero is anonymous by default. Both the sender, the receiver, and the amount of the transaction are hidden by default. And just as a funny aside, last year, my Google Cloud platform got crypto jacked and the hacker began mining both Ethereum and Monero using my servers. So I did a bit of sleuthing and I found the hacker's script which contained both the Ethereum and Monero addresses. And the difference here was with Ethereum, I was able to find all the transactions associated with that address because again, that blockchain is transparent. But with Monero, when I tried to look up that address, I was completely unable to do so. See, Monero is part of a larger circle of crypto projects emerging in the privacy space. Alongside projects like Haven, Equilibria, or Loki, we will begin to see the emergence of an ecosystem of privacy-centric tools. And it's really not hard to see the utility of these different kinds of services. I have a friend who is very bullish on these different privacy coins and he actually took out a $60,000 personal loan and invested it all in this space and at its height it was worth almost half a million dollars. Now I'm not saying that's a good idea or you should do that. In fact Monero has made such a splash that the IRS actually issued a $625,000 bounty payable to anyone who can crack the Monero protocol. And real quick, unlike Ethereum, there is no gas limit on expressing your gratitude. So go ahead and click that like button and help us evangelize the good word of crypto. Thanks. Okay, so now we're gonna set up our Raspberry Pi so we can begin mining Monero. Okay, so now we just wanna take our micro SD card out of the Raspberry Pi so we can insert it into our computer. Okay, and the way I do this is by using a uh, micro to SD adapter. So I'm just gonna throw it in like so, and then I will throw this into my computer so that we can format the card. Okay, so we're just gonna download Raspberry Pi Imager. So I went to raspberrypi.com forward slash software, and I'm just gonna do download for Mac OS. Again, this is how you flash Raspberry Pi OS to your micro SD card. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and install this, throw it into our applications. Okay, and then I should be able to open up applications. Okay, and then here's Raspberry Pi Imager, so I'll go ahead and open it. Okay. Okay, so to open this menu on Mac, we're gonna do Control Shift X. Control Shift X. Okay, and now we get these advanced settings here. So let's do a couple things. Let's go ahead and change the host name. So out of the box, the host name is Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pi.local. Let's change this to refactored. Let's go ahead and enable SSH and let's change the password. 
okay. And let's go ahead and configure Wi-Fi here. So this is my router name, my SSID, aka network name. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my password. Okay, and then I will set my country code. Let's do US. And I'm going to go ahead and save these options here. Okay, so let's format our micro SD card. So we're gonna choose our variant of Raspberry Pi OS. I like the standard installation here. And then we're gonna go ahead and select our micro SD card. Be mindful here, you, you will reformat whatever drive you select, so um, be careful. All right, so this is my 32 gigabyte micro SD card that we inserted. And let's go ahead and write it. Okay, so we finished formatting our SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And then I'm gonna take my SD card out of the computer and insert it into our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now we're going to plug in our Raspberry Pi and get everything set up. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and boot it up. Okay, so now we can do ping to determine if the um, Raspberry Pi is connected to our local network. So I named uh, the device, I changed the host name to refactored, uh, and I'm gonna tack on dot local because there's some funky stuff that goes on with DNS and that helps um, with the routing if we add dot local. Okay, so we see ping messages being responded to, that's promising. So we should be able to SSH right into our device. And again, we're gonna use um, the new password. So I'm gonna do SSH pi at refactored dot local. And then it's gonna ask if we want to use an RSA fingerprint, uh, yes. And then we're gonna use a new password. So type that in. All right, so now we're in our Raspberry Pi and we utilize the pre-configuration advanced settings option in Raspberry Pi Imager. Okay, so on the left here, I am remote desktoped into my Raspberry Pi and on the right, I am SSH'd into the Raspberry Pi. And we want to run crypto mining. So the first thing I would do is, so we're just gonna to wanna to make sure that our Raspberry Pi is updated. Okay, we're also going to install a few dependencies. Make sure that we have a minor gate uh, pooling account set up. So I'm just gonna navigate over to minor gate. Okay, so I have minor gate set up here and we're gonna be mining Monero. So it currently says we're offline, that is right. So the, the script that I wanna use is this guy here, CPU Miner Multi for multi-core. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and um, grab the repo, come back over to our Raspberry Pi. And one thing I'm gonna do is make myself root. So I'm gonna do sudo su dash. And then let's just clone this repo. So git clone, now we're downloading the directory. Okay, let's go into directory here. And I believe there is a build file. Yeah, build.sha, so let's just run that. Okay, so now we're gonna execute the minor script. And the last argument is the email address that we use to sign up with on Minergate. Okay, so we got an error here. So here's the issue. This port is a non-standard port and my router is gonna is blocking this port. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some changes to my router's firewall in order to allow traffic over this port you're in effect weakening your firewall. So just keep that in mind. But I'm gonna do that by going to the login portal 
for my firewall. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to firewall, IPv6, actually IPv4, and we're gonna do low security. Okay, I don't know if that requires a reboot. Doesn't look like it. So it's still trying to mine here. Let's see if it doesn't go through. There we go. So yeah, I was able to just quickly change the firewall settings and now it's uh, showing printouts of our hash rate. Okay, so now we are successfully mining cryptocurrency and we're getting a real-time log of the rate at which we're mining along with diagnostic information. So let's step through these log messages. First, we can see the status of each CPU. Remember that the Raspberry Pi has four CPUs and we are utilizing each of them. The stratum difficulty as shown here refers to how frequently you submit shares to the pool, which proves you've been working on the problem mathematically. If the number is too low relative to your compute power, then you will be sending shares too frequently. And if it's too high, you won't submit enough shares. Um, these are charts that provide general rules of thumbs around where to set this. Next, we can see the hash rate. So the hash rate measures the performance of mining hardware, the higher the better. For comparison, an industrial grade GPU card such as a Tesla K80 has a hash rate of around 2.22 mega hash, which is 2.22 million hash per second. Next, this acceptance message means the pool acknowledged the receipt of a hash we submitted and it was accepted. And next, I want to just demonstrate a little tool that will show the utilization of the hardware on your Raspberry Pi. So there's a package called HTOP. So I'm just going to do apt get install HTOP. And we should be able to just go ahead and run that. Okay, so the reason I like this tool is it shows the total RAM memory utilization, but it also shows the CPU core utilization uh, for each core on the Raspberry Pi. So what you can do is while you're mining, you can keep an eye on this and it will show um, it'll show the level of utilization for each core and you'll have an idea of how your system is being utilized. This is also just generally useful to understand if there's a process that is um, overusing certain resources. Okay, so now it's been mining for 24 hours and I'm back in my MinerGate account and I'm just going to survey how much we've accumulated. So. The Raspberry Pi has a very, very, very low hash rate, so it's really not practical for anything like this, but it's still a really good exercise that I would suggest people do to get a better feel for how crypto mining works and learn more about the space. If we take the amount of total mined and multiply by the going rate of Monero, then we can understand what we've earned in USD. So one Monero is like, I don't know, around 250 so you know we still are fractions of a penny at this point so something like this is just not economical but again still a good exercise um, for educational purposes anyways feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos about emerging tech thank you